Hi again, um, all you sim racing fanatics. Um, I'm, today I'm doing a, a video on basically just how to set up um, SimVi from an, an idiot's guide um, because I found it to be a little bit confusing. That's the program there. It's a little bit confusing and I've been put off installing it on my computer for, for several reasons but the main reason is because of the price because it's now it's eighty nine dollars which works out to about fifty two pound which I had to buy I ordered it a couple of days ago eighth of August I think 2015 a year this this video is made and uh, I thought bloody hell you know that's a lot of money for just software and I thought well what the hell's that going to do um, but boy was I wrong I mean I've been using uh, the book kickers on my seat which you, you can see on my other videos for four five six years and I've been adding to them and I've just been running them through um, just taking an extension off the uh, the sound that plugs into the uh, the subwoofer out the input output sorry off the uh, sound onboard sound and just using the sound to generate the uh, the shakes but I now understand all about SimVibe and I would just wish I'd have got onto it years ago because SimVibe actually takes um, the telemetry is it or something like that from the game and converts that to, to your book kickers and it, it works in such a, a fantastic way it's so different from uh, um, just you're just running a book kicker from the uh, from onboard sound um, so I thought I'd take the plunge and I ordered it uh, like I say a, a, a couple of days ago installed it which is there I thought, well, my God, I've got to get 52 quid's worth out of this. Um, and the reason why I'm doing the video is because it, it can be a little bit confusing how you set it up. Um, two guys, Darren and Sean on Inside Sim Racing, gone over it, but again, confusing. You have to keep watching it and watching it, and all of a sudden it will click, and it clicked with me. So I just thought, right, I'm going to take the plunge, ordered it, downloaded it, um, now what, what you have to do, and this, this is where it got, I got confused with it, is you have to go to your control panel, uh, go to your sounds, and then go sound, and then what you've got to do is you've got to, in, well, firstly sorry, you have to have another sound card. So my second sound card is the uh, Zonar DG audio device from Asus. That's my second sound card. Uh, the onboard sound, I've got a sabre tooth, a sabre tooth motherboard, is a real tech high definition. Now that is what I'm using for my uh, just ordinary sound coming out of my Logitech's front and rear. And what you have to do is you have to configure, well not so much this, but you just configure so that the, the computer knows where the sounds are coming from. Um, but what got me is uh, it tells you that you have to do the same with your uh, the, the 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 sound card that you put in to run your book kickers. So you click on your wherever whatever make they are, and when you configure it, see this is where I got confused. It says you have to do it in quadraphonic mode. I mean my set setup works, but when I click test. I get nothing, just a tiny little oomph there on the back seat with that, that this one here. I get the tiniest little oomph, but what but what's apparently it's doing, it's sending out a high frequency signal to your book kickers, but because your book kickers only take low frequency, it, uh, it doesn't show up and you think, hmm, it doesn't work. So you start messing around with your cabling, which is what I did, clicking it in stereo, 5.1, 7.1. And it, I just thought it wasn't working, but if you leave it at that, and then just leave all this, because it, apparently it says in the manual that you have to let it run in full range mode or something, so 
you just do all that, configure it, and then leave it. So that's your your speakers for your um, your dedicated sound card for your um, for your book kickers and your onboard sound is is handled its normal way through your high tech real tech. So you just close all that down, and then once you've installed your software and um, it activated it. You just click on the uh, the Simvive software, open it, and um, you have to sign in. And if you don't, if, if it's uh, if, you, if there's been a lot of people saying that they've had problems with with it signing in, um, it should do it automatically. If not, you have to check that it's the actual. Update, you know the, the, the updated version, and this is uh, Sim Vibe 4. I was actually using Sim Vibe 3 when I downloaded it off the site, but I couldn't get uh, Project Cars. I couldn't get any of the um, the games that weren't recognised by the the software. And what it's saying to you, another thing you have to be careful of is when you downloaded it and you open it, you have to make sure that all your root uh, sorry, all your games are in their root file, which is like C under Steam. I was I was putting all my games under F um, because I've got two I've got two um, SSDs. I was putting all mine on that one, and SimVibe wasn't recognising them, and I thought, well, what's going on? So you have to actually make sure. That uh, all your games are installed in their um, locations, and then when you open it, you, you're presented with this menu now: manage SIM buttons, visual lap analyzer settings. You go on settings, and then this is where you'll see your. Uh, SIM device, and this is where you start to mess around with the software. This is where you start checking things. Now, as soon as soon as the uh, as soon as you click on one of the speakers, um, they'll come on straight away. That light there comes on on the four-channel amplifier that I've got. It doesn't come on when it's playing audio, which is what I like. Which is which is one of the reasons why I bought it. Because when I'm playing games like R Factor or A7, all the UI music, all the music, it's firing the the, the book kickers all the time. But this sim experience, this sim vibe, only fires when you get out of pits. Your engine will, will start to roar. Now, when I click on this now, I get thumps. Thumps, and you've got two different modes. You've got chassis mode and extensions mode. Chassis mode is where you have that speaker on each corner. They uh, have four four uh, shakers. Um, extensions mode is uh, you just place one under your seat. It's it's a little bit easier for people that haven't got a full rig that they can't mount for. I mean, I've got um, my, my game race. It doesn't have four corners. It's just got um, a rear and a front, if you like, with the centre post, so it's a bit awkward. But what I've done is I've mounted two shakers on the sides of the seat on risers. One that side, and one that side, to give me left and right. Um, when I'm going over rumble strip right and left, so that, that's why I've mounted them in in chassis mode. So you've got left and right, and then I've also just um, put another cable on the the black end. On the black output of the output of the um, the card, your green green is for um, front, left, and right. 
black is the black output is for rear left and right. Well, I've only just used one mono jack to RCA, just just to fill out the uh, the speakers that I've got fitted on my seat, and I've just got one fitted underneath the uh, underneath my seat to fire through the seat, and that gives me all the the um, the thuds from the um, from the uh, the game, because you can hear you can hear. Um, Oh god, all sorts gear changes, and um, it's just fantastic. I can't believe how how good it actually does feel, and it, it, it makes such a lot of difference. It is unbelievable. Um, what I'll quickly do is I'll just go into say one that <clears throat> goes pretty quick. I'll just load up project cars and while it's doing that I'll alt and tab back out to the sim back out to the um, and go into output mixer and this is where you start to this is where the, the it starts to get technical You've got all these effects, engine, gear change, impacts, road bumps. And this is this, these are all the values that I've got them at now. Um, I mean, the gear change one. It, it, every time it goes, it changes gear. It thumps underneath the seat. Um, the vibrations, speed, white noise, which is wind, um, lock up, mono. I don't know. I've got two of them on there. Understand that, but the good thing about this is that you can switch them all on and off. To be honest, I'm still messing around with, with the because I haven't had it a few days. And uh, you, you, the good thing about these is you can turn each one on and off. And when you start to use the software, it's best to switch everything off and then just run through each one to know where you are, which is what I did. Start off with engine vibration. It's not quite full bore, but it really does rattle the seat and then add gear changes. And again, I mean, I've got mine set to full, but I could turn that down. And then you set each one individually until you get all the ones that you want. And then it doesn't sort of, uh, you know, wondering what's, what's doing what. And uh, it's made an absolute hell of a difference. I've still got one book kicker which is mounted right behind the seat that one there which I just use I just use that one for coming out of the onboard sound so generally it just works through volume so if I'm listening to music or anything it still works the old way if you like the, the way that you everyone had to have it before Sim Vibe came out and when I test that with games like Project Cars, switch Sim Vibe off, and just use the uh, the output from the onboard sound. The rumbles, you know, while they're good, they're just nowhere near as accurate and as effective as as Sim Vibes. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um, can't recommend it enough. I know it sounds like it's a lot of money, but it isn't. So, I would definitely say it's worth it. And if you can get, just get around the technical side of it, make sure you um, go into your Windows and sort out that, like, like I say, that quadraphonic sound for the uh, the extra sound card. Once you've done that, forget about you can't hear it. It it, it is checking it, so don't worry about that. Which is what I did. I got myself into a right pickle, thinking, shit, it's not worth, you know, and I've wasted my money. But once you get that sorted out, go into your game. Um, you don't hear no audio music, you don't hear no thumping UI, it's just fantastic. It sometimes used to scare me when I was playing Race Race 07 and I come back out the uh, go back into the garage and thump it would start working with other other sounds and it, this doesn't, it shuts off. As soon as you sh as soon as you come out of the program where you go back into the garage, it stops. It only works when you, you hit the throttle. And that's when you start getting all your, your effects, all your bumps and all your suspension. And 
it's just brilliant and I absolutely love it so I would definitely say it's, it's worth it it's a bit of an investment you know 52 52 pound for this I mean I've got four book kickers with the amps to go with it you know you're looking at <coughs> let me see three four I'm probably looking at six or seven hundred pounds worth of just sound stuff for the uh, the seat it's just ridiculous but I mean obviously I've had my book kickers and my amps for, for years and years so you know if you like I've kind of wavered that now but just adding to that this week this sim vibe it's just totaled that a way to 600 700 even um, and something else I had to do let's get out of the seat since putting sim vibe on is I had to put some strengthening a bar some threaded bar through the seat to uh, to strengthen that because these these shakers were just absolutely rattling it's just absolutely unbelievable you can feel everything and these were rattling a bit so I've put some of that through <coughs> just to steady these two risers <coughs> uh, and that's the one underneath that's uh, using the, the, the black rear output of the, uh, the the second sound card just for the gear changes and engine vibration and then these two side ones um, will actually work left and right when you go over a left bump you feel it on the left vice versa and eventually I will stick that book kicker that's on the back underneath the pedal so I've, I can go into what's called extensions mode as well where you can put one under there and then either one under the seat so you've got chassis mode working left and right and then you can go into extensions mode at the same time and run that as well but for now I've just got it in uh, chassis mode because um, like I say I haven't got you can't really get any definition of, of left and right on, on the you know when you look at it it's just the the the, the middle pole coming through and it's there's, there's no left and there's no frame if you like you know to I mean to put a book kicker somewhere here unless I make some kind of a rod or a bar or something which I'm not really going to do because they have got, still going for rumours it is so yeah <coughs> That's what I've done, and uh, if you're interested in getting it, or if you think, mm, shall I get it, believe you me, it is worth it, so, um, yeah, any advice, if you need any advice, or if you watch this and you, you think, I don't know what I'm doing, just let me know, just just leave me a comment and I'll... Uh, I'll answer it for you. I mean, I've had to do it the hard way. Like I say, I read on uh, in Inside Sim Racing. I watched their videos, but it's it you know it, it's, it's still confusing and, until you do it yourself. Um, so I, I've done it. I've I've I've, I've got the uh, software. I'll never ever go back. I'll always use SimVibe now because it's just brilliant. It takes the whole um, using book kickers to a whole new level. Believe me, you will notice. 100% the difference between sim vibe and standard output sound so thanks thanks for now um, I hope you like the video and speak to you again soon bye bye